Welcome to this lesson to help you learn English with the news. We're going to read a news article together, and you're going to learn a lot of advanced grammar, natural vocabulary, correct sentence structure, and even correct pronunciation directly from reading this article with me. Of course, I'm Jennifer from JForceEnglish.com, and this is your place to become a fluent, confident English speaker. Let's get started. Welcome to the article. Let me read the headline. Should cats be allowed on airplanes? Hmm. So this is an opinion-based article. And the topic is cats on airplanes. Now, let's say you are going to provide an answer to this question because it's a question, right? So if you want to sound more advanced, more professional, you can add an opinion word. You can say, in my opinion... And then you can state your opinion. Cats should or shouldn't be allowed on airplanes. So you can say, in my opinion, that's a very common one. You can also say, from my perspective. Now notice, it's from, from my perspective. In my opinion, from my perspective. These are the two most common opinion words that you can use. You could also say simply, I think. I think that cats should or shouldn't be allowed on airplanes. Now notice here, I included that. A lot of students get confused about when you need to use that and when you don't. Generally, in written English, we include that. I think that cats should. Generally, you can absolutely just say, I think cats should. Now, in spoken English, we generally do not include it just to make it shorter. And we say, I think cats should. So if you're writing, you can include it, it's more common, but if you're speaking, it's more common to omit it, exclude it. So here are some opinion words you can start adding to your speech. You can start right now and share your opinion about cats on airplanes in the comment of this video and use in my opinion or from my perspective. They will both help you sound very advanced. All right, let's continue on. At the Bogota airport, as passengers were placing their carry-ons, laptops, and purses in bins, inching their way on the conveyor belt for inspection. Okay, let's stop here. Carry-ons. This is absolutely must know for travel vocabulary. Most commonly planes, but you can also use this on trains, buses, most likely boats as well. Now, a carry-on is simply a bag that you carry on to the airport, onto the airplane, excuse me, not airport, airplane. Now, a suitcase is generally larger and you would check that. So when you get to the airport, you check your suitcase and it goes under the plane. But then you take your smaller suitcases, your smaller bags onto the airplane with you. You carry it onto the plane. So here on Google Images, you can see the carry-on bags. Now, this right here that this man is opening, this is called the overhead bin, the overhead bin. And your bag must fit in the overhead bin or go under your seat in order for it to be a carry-on bag. So let me just write that here. So overhead bin, so your carry-on bag or suitcase 
MOSFET in the overhead bin or under your seat. And then we have larger suitcases. Larger suitcases are called checked bags or luggage, and they go under the plane. So they do not go on the plane with you. They go under the plane. All right. Now let's move on and look at this. Inching their way. So an inch is a very small amount. So if I say I'm inching my way, it means I'm making slow progress. So if you said I'm inching my way towards the exit, it means the line is going very slowly. So you could use that when you're at a grocery store or when you're going through security at the airport. So you might say, I inched my way through security and it took me almost one hour. So if you use inch my way, the person understands you're making progress slowly. All right. One item stood out, stood out. This is a great phrasal verb to stand out. And this means to be noticeable, to, to stand out, to be noticeable. So it's something that you notice more than other things. So let's say I have these two black pens. And maybe I'll take this one, this purple one, because it's darker, right? And then I can take this one. Well, if I get rid of this one, this is a better example. If I have these three pens, which one, in your opinion, from your perspective, which one stands out? Stands out. Which one is more noticeable? Well, the yellow one stands out, obviously, because it's a bright color. So this item, this item in the all the suitcases, this one item was more noticeable because there was a cat in the suitcase. That's why it stood out. One item stood out, was more noticeable. It was a cat. And its owner was putting it into a cabin ready case. So a cabin is what I showed you in the picture. That's where all the passengers go when they're on a plane. They just call that the cabin. So that cat is going on the plane. Okay, let me just write out that example sentence with the yellow pen for you. The yellow pen stood out. So remember, this is a phrasal verb. You need your verb stand, which you conjugate. In this case, it's conjugated in the past simple. And then you need your preposition out. The yellow pen stood out. For most travelers, this would hardly be noticeable. Yet for me, alarm bells rang. Okay, let's take a look here. Hardly. This is an adverb. Hardly be noticeable. When you use hardly, it means a small amount. So for most people, they wouldn't notice the cat. It's a small amount that they would notice. So not very much, a small amount. There is another word that means the exact same thing, another adverb. You could also say hardly or barely, hardly, barely. They mean the same thing in this specific context, a small amount. This would barely be noticeable. This would barely, hardly 
be noticeable. And remember, instead of be noticeable, you can say stand out. This would hardly stand out. This would barely stand out. Yet for me, alarm bells rang. So just like your phone rings, right? That's the verb we use to ring when you get a phone call. Well, that's the verb we use with alarms. Roo, roo, roo. That's ring. The alarm rings and rang is just in the past simple alarm bells rang. I am severely allergic to cats, vulnerable to allergic asthma, and a cat was going to be sharing my cabin during the six hour Air Canada flight. Now remember, cabin is just used to describe the interior of the plane. That's it. So the interior of the plane, they call it a cabin. I don't know why. Interior of the plane. So it's where you sit, where your bags are, where the pilot is, everything on the inside of the plane. All right, what else? Oh, severely. So severely, this is an adverb and it's saying to a large degree. So remember, hardly was small, but then severely is to a large degree. So in in certain contexts, you could think of them as opposites. So this is to a large degree. To a large degree. All right, let's move on here. Why are cats allowed? Yes, dogs are also permitted in the cabin, yet twice as many people are allergic to cats as to dogs, according to the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. Let's take a look at yet because I noticed they also used it here yet for me. So yet, yet. Yet is one of those words in English that has many different meanings depending on the context. And that's why it's so useful to study from articles because you see the context that the word is being used. In this specific context, yet is being used as a conjunction. It's a conjunction. And it has the same meaning as but or however. So it's used to show a contrast. So here, let's look at our first example. Most travelers wouldn't notice a cat. I would notice a cat. Do you see the contrast? Most travelers would not. I would. So we have a yes and a no. There's a contrast. We use yet to help us transition from the one contrast point to the other contrast point. So you could equally say, but for me, however, for me, yet for me, in this specific context. And it's the same thing here. So cats are allowed, dogs are allowed, but twice as many people are allergic yet. So we're setting up another contrast and we're using yet as a conjunction. Now, just as a reminder, all of these notes are available as a PDF download. So you can look in the description of this video to get this download. Let's continue on. Yet twice as many people are allergic to cats as to dogs. Here, they chose to use as to dogs. Honestly, I would say then. So we have twice as many people are allergic to cats than dogs. That's what I would say, than dogs. And you're probably more familiar with that wording. So for example, 
more people buy dogs than cats. More people fly than travel by bus, <laughs> for example. So just showing you that that contrast, that comparison with them. All right, let's continue on. Dangers of exposure. So what is a cat allergic passenger to do? So this person is allergic to cats. They get a reaction, but someone is taking a cat on the plane and they might be quite close to each other. So they're asking for advice. What is that person to do? And this is the advice. Take medications that help prevent symptoms, advises Randolph. So notice here, advises. This is being used as our verb, our verb. And the noun form of advise, we can use advice, which is the noun. What advice do What advice do you have for me? Cuz this person is asking for advice. What advice do you have for me? And I can say I advise you to take medication. Advise advice. So notice the pronunciation difference. Advice, advise, advice, advise. This is our noun and this is our verb. Spelling difference and pronunciation difference as well. This includes a non-drowsy antihistamine taken an hour before the flight and two puffs of a rescue inhaler 15 minutes before boarding. So drowsy, drowsy is when you feel sleepy or tired. If you feel sleepy or tired, sleepy, tired. But when you say non-drowsy, it makes it negative because a lot of medication makes you feel sleepy or tired. It makes you drowsy. So a lot of medication will say on their label, Uh, Do not drive after taking medication because it may make you drowsy, which means sleepy. But generally, drowsy is the vocabulary choice when we're talking specifically about medication. Now, if I had a long day at work, or if I didn't sleep very well, I wouldn't say I feel drowsy because drowsy implies the result of some sort of medication because we use it with medication. So if you're just talking about working hard or not sleeping well, you would use tired or sleepy. I feel tired. I feel sleepy. I am or I feel. Either one of those is fine. I am, I feel tired or sleepy. But if you're talking specifically about medication, then you can use drowsy. All right, so that's the advice, which is a noun. Let's continue on. A mask used to protect against COVID-19 could help prevent the dander from getting into your airways. Dander, that is something from the cat's fur. So little particles from the cat's fur is called dander. And that's generally why people are allergic to cats. It's the dander on their fur. Airways is, of course, just how you get air into your body is through your airways. So your nose is one of your airways and your mouth, your throat is another one of your airways. So how you get 
air into your body. Now, notice how they're using could as our modal verb because could is used to show possibility or potential. Possibility or potential. So it's not saying that it will help you. Will is a more of an absolute This will work. It sounds 100% certain. This could work. It's just a possibility. It's also possible that it won't work. So could is used to show possibility. So this medicine could make you drowsy. Could, there's a possibility, the potential, and that's a modal verb. And remember, we always have grammatically, we always have modal plus base verb. So you don't change your verb that comes next. It's always the base verb. And could doesn't change either. This medicine could make you drowsy. Let's continue on. Is anything being done? Is there any progress in at least making the public and the airline industry aware of the cat allergy problem? We have been trying to raise awareness of cat allergy in cabins since 1985. Notes Tanya Winders, president of the Virginia-based Global Allergy Airways Patient Platform, an 82-member network of patient-based groups, including the Asthma and Allergy Network. Winders points to the Federal Aviation Administration's Air Carrier Access Act, which is supposed to protect people with disabilities, including severe allergies. But the only protection the website offers is advice. Choose an airline that does not allow cats in cabins, call ahead, and check with your doctor. All right, so here, this is the advice. We have our noun here, and you can see those three points. That's what she advises using our verb. That's what she advises you do. Now, let's go back here. There were a lot of very long names. Those are just the names of these specific groups or the specific act. You can just ignore those pretty much. What can I show you here? We have raise awareness. Raise is the verb you would use. You can also use increase awareness. Increase awareness, but raise is a very common verb with the word awareness. So you can add that to your vocabulary. Now notice we have since 1985. And when I see the word since, I can look back and I already know that my sentence is going to be in the present perfect. Now what verb tense do we have here? We have been trying. We've been trying. We've been trying. This is the present perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous. And it shows an action that started in the past and continues until now. So when did this action start? Well, it started in 1985. So that was the start point, 1985. And then it's continued all the way until now. And it will continue until some unknown time in the future. So not too much on this last page because it was mainly those long groups, those long organizations. So what I'll do now is I will read the article from start to finish so you can focus on my pronunciation and you can imitate my pronunciation as well. And remember, you can also look in the description of this video to get the link that summarizes all the notes I made. So now I'll read the article from start to finish. Should cats be allowed on airplanes? 
At the Bogota airport, as passengers were placing their carry-ons, laptops, and purses in bins, inching their way on the conveyor belt for inspection, one item stood out. It was a cat, and its owner was putting it into a cabin-ready case. For most travelers, this would hardly be noticeable. Yet for me, alarm bells rang. I am severely allergic to cats, vulnerable to allergic asthma, and a cat was going to be sharing my cabin during the six-hour Air Canada flight. Why are cats allowed? Yes, dogs are also permitted in the cabin, yet twice as many people are allergic to cats as to dogs, according to the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. Dangers of exposure. So what is a cat allergic passenger to do? Take medications that help prevent symptoms, advises Randolph. This includes a non-drowsy antihistamine taken an hour before the flight and two puffs of a rescue inhaler 15 minutes before boarding. A mask used to protect against COVID-19 could help prevent the dander from getting into your airways. A HEPA air filter, which most airplanes say they use, could also help, but not if a cat is sitting next to you. Is anything being done? Is there any progress in at least making the public and the airline industry aware of the cat allergy problem? We have been trying to raise awareness of cat allergy in cabins since 1985, notes Tonya Winders, president of the Virginia-based Global Allergy Airways Patient Platform, an 82-member network of patient-based groups, including the Asthma and Allergy Network. Winders points to the Federal Aviation Administration's Air Carrier Access Act, which is supposed to protect people with disabilities, including severe allergies. But the only protection the website offers is advice. Choose an airline that does not allow cats in cabins. Call ahead and check with your doctor. Amazing job with this lesson. Now you can look in the description below and you'll see a link where you can download the free lesson PDF that summarizes everything you learned in this lesson. And if you found this lesson helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, jforestenglish.com and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying.